Ghana, Central Region, I'm from Angasa, Oyezun. It's a Central Region there. You mean some Oyezun Angasa? Now, you're about young fans, man. You're about young crew, come and see you. Eh, you're about young there. I'm from engagement we've had with the traditional uh, bodies. Basically, we've spent a lot of time trying to explain to Nananum uh, what the whole decommissioning process is. And we believe that they've understood the rationale behind the decommissioning of the Mr. Louis platform. And so today, what I'm going to do, basically what we are trying to do is to get the media to also appreciate uh, what we are, the rationale behind the decommissioning, what they should expect, and the kind of communication we expect them to pass on to the general public. So as a, uh, a bit of a background, the salt port field was discovered in 1970 by Signal Aramco. Signal Ameko, okay, so. And for the records, the platform, the Mr. Louis platform, uh, from the shores of Salt Pond is about 13 kilometers. So whilst you, you can stand here and see it, it's actually a bit far. Uh, but the, where we are sitting now is actually perpendicular to, it's about 90 degrees. So it's a straight line from where we are having this press briefing to the, the, the rig. So if you decide to take a boat from here and go straight in a straight line, you go and hit the, the rig. But the point is that the rig had been producing. Years back, Ghana was benefiting from this rig. At the highest level of production, we were getting about 4,800 barrels of oil per day. 4,800 barrels of oil per day. But basically, these are different companies over time. It is not GMPC, which was producing the field. So uh, the field produced from two wells. So even though we drilled six wells, 
If you go on, under the platform, six wells were drilled. Only two has ever produced oil of any quantity. But it got to a stage where production per day dropped from the 4,800 barrels per day to 200 barrels per day. What it meant is that if you do the oil calculations, the cost of producing the oil and the amount and the value of the oil you get, the cost was getting higher than the revenue. So it, it, it didn't make economic sense for you to continue producing. So once it got to about 200 barrels per day, it didn't make economic So if even today you take the price of the barrel of oil and multiply it by 200, uh, sorry, the 200 barrels per day, and look at the cost, the hiring of the equipment and everything. It didn't make economic sense for us to continue to. So in 2015, a decision was taken by the country to abandon production from the well because it was no longer economic. And in 2016, once you have determined that there is no, uh, there's no economic reason to continue or you don't even expect, no matter what you do, it will not make economic sense, then you have to abandon. And so that is what the concept of decommissioning is about. So the decommissioning is basically you are, you are taking something out of use. That's the most simple way of explaining decommissioning, taking something out of use. It could be a ship which is decommissioned because now you are, it's no longer uh, in, in use. So what we are doing is to decommission. And the main objectives of decommissioning the platform is purely on safety grounds that you need to make sure that there are no possibilities of leakages because this uh, field has been in, in, since 1970. The technology used over time has changed. Even the technology used in oil drilling has changed. And uh, these uh, metals, as you know, I'm sure you've seen a picture of the state. This is a near current state of the platform. You see virtually all the metals are corroded, which means that if care is not taken, one day part of the pipes, and it's pipes, uh, we've drilled, you know, we've gone down about 24 meters. This is shallow water. Let me give you maybe some comparative. Uh, this is shallow water to the extent that from the seabed to where you are getting the oil is about 24 meters. And so it's really shallow water. Compared to what we do on the Talo and the ENI and those, some of them go as far as three kilometers below the sea. That's not from the surface of the water. That's a below the seabed. That's how you get the oil. So you have to put pipes for three kilometers before you hit the oil and it starts coming out. So when we decide to abandon that one, what it means is that we need to plug all the, those holes for three kilometers to make sure that there will be no seepages through those pipes up. That's exactly what we are doing. For the time being, some amount of, when we decided not to do continue producing, some amount of plugging is done. Plugging, this is how plugging is basically filling the, the pipes with something that will not allow any gas or oil to seep through. It's normally a cement of a particular type. And that's what they are going to do when we say they are going to be plugging the wells. So this is permanent plugging. You, you, you get my point. You are sealing it forever to the extent that you have no plans of going back down there. Previously, that would be temporary, isn't it? When you, you move from one world to other, or you, you do some sealing, maybe you might want to come back, but this is permanent plugging. So the first phase of the work, that the vessel that you can see on the sea, which has been traveling for the past virtually two weeks. Well, how many weeks? It started on the 8th of September from Nigeria. So today is when it has arrived. <laughs> it's virtually close to the platform. I'm sure it, it, it will take it, it about another three to four hours. Because what you are seeing is actually 
another platform. It's called a jackup rig. Being towed. So it is being towed by tugboats all the way from Nigeria. So what happened was that the Ghana Navy went to the border of Ghana, uh, Togo. So immediately this vessel got into Ghana's territorial waters. It was handed over to the Ghana Navy. They accompanied it for security purposes. They accompanied it all the way to Salt Point, here, where we are now. And the tugboat is drawing the platform closer to the Mr. Louis platform. So it's like now you have uh, jackups. So it's called a jackup rig. And they have the equipment on that to do the plugging, meaning that pumping the cement and all the other liquids into the holes to seal it permanently. Once the hole is sealed, they have to cut the legs of the platform, and you know, which is sitting on the seabed. It has to be cut. And then the top side, which is the part that me and you see, is the last part that will go. So this process we expect to take about nine months. So this uh, Jacob uh, ship will be sitting by the Minister Louis. They will be cutting when they come to both the, the part underwater and the part above ground. And they have to cut it in pieces in such a way that it can be transported to the shore, uh, the shore base in Takradi, second day Takradi. So when they, during the process too, there will be supply vessels supplying the people on the two platforms. Now, you know there are two platforms, the Mr. Louis platform and the Jacob drill uh, uh, platform, which is going to do the uh, plugging and abandonment. There will be people living on those platforms until the work is done. They will need fuel, they will need supplies. So we'll be seeing supply vessels as well. The other thing that the communities, the people who use the water will also see will be the marine uh, police and the Navy. We have contracted the Navy to provide security during this process. One of the things that will be done during the process, just like when you are putting up a building, during, in a construction zone, there has to be a cutoff where nobody can enter. So we are going to do a 500 meter radius where no boat will be allowed in, no fishing will be allowed within that radius. It's a construction. It's like commissioning and decommissioning is like you are in construction. Decommissioning is demolition. You are demo, de, when you are demolishing a building, anything can happen. Safety has to be paramount. So during that process, for the safety of our own fishermen, we expect them not to get within 500 meters of the, where the operation is taking place. And so all this information has already been passed on to the communities, but it's something that we need to reiterate. 500 meters radius around the decommissioning zone, the, Marine, the Navy will be patrolling that to warn off those who get too close. We are hoping that the communities understand. Uh, this morning, we observed something very interesting. Virtually all the boats that went fishing, when they saw the <laughs> activity, the ship coming in, everybody wanted to go and see. Exactly what we were trying to avoid. All of them, if you stood here in the morning, you see all of them in between the platform and the arriving uh, ship. But I think as, soon as they saw the ships arriving, they themselves moved away. So as of now, you don't see much. But when we came here, even about two hours ago, some of them were still around. But we, we understand curiosity. Uh, when I've not seen a jackup rig before, all they know is the Mr. Louis platform. This is the first time they are seeing another platform just like Mr. Louis coming close there. So they, I'm sure they wanted to. The word spread around that the thing has finally arrived. So they all went to see. We are just hoping that when work begins, they don't get close as close as they went today because they were in between the jackup and the arriving uh, patrol vessels. We communicated to our people. They said they saw them. 
but not, nothing. I don't think there was any incident. Nobody was attacked. Nobody was sacked. They themselves moved away because they just went to see what was happening. Unlike when, if you go to the, what we were experiencing in the Talu and ENI uh, 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 platforms, some of the, the boats go and tie their nets around the legs <laughs> of the platform. And you go there and they are sitting and they are cooking. <laughs> in a place where gas is being produced, and you know the danger, gas, fire, anything can happen. So we are, we, are, we are lucky as a country that nothing has happened in those areas. And we are also proud to announce that after a lot of engagement, most of the boats are keeping away from the platform. The level of incursion at the last report has considerably reduced from both the ENI area and the Talu area. What we are hoping is that for this work, the nine months period, 500 meters radius is such a, it's a small spot on the sea. So there's still a lot of space around for our fishermen folk to still do their fishing. What we are hoping to do is to restore the area around the Mr. Louis platform once we are done with the decommissioning to the state it was before any equipments were even put there so that marine life can also restart. That is one of our biggest targets. And in all our planning, it, restoring the area around that place to its the economic level so that fishermen can still go back to that area and even fish. And hopefully reassigning that area to maybe another contractor with a different technology to try and see if they can find oil. Uh, in, my, in our conversation with Nananum, they are very keen on making sure that economic activity re re returns to that area. And GMPC has made it one of our targets that if we can restore, you know, you plug all those wells so that nothing happens. But it doesn't mean that you cannot search for oil around that area. At least we know there's oil around there, isn't it? Because history shows that some time ago we were getting oil. Maybe the technology we were adopting at that time no longer allows us to get a lot of, a lot of economic oil. But maybe if we can do, expand the area around the, where this thing happened, we might still get oil from the salt pond area. And economic activity will return to this area. So, ladies and gentlemen of the press, we, just, we called you once again to let you know that any moment from now, once this uh, jackup rig gets close to Mr. Louis, that rig itself has to be anchored so that it will be stable and then the work then begins. So work can begin tomorrow, the next day, in three days, four days, once they get there. But our shadow is that we are looking to have all these things vanish from the surface of the water within nine months. It's not an easy thing. The reason why it is not an easy job is that we are thinking about safety. If any of these wells blows up, it's an oil spill on our hands. And GMPC and its contractors have had to go through a very rigorous process of acquiring all the permits, including from environmental protection agency, the marine authorities, we are also working with the Ghana Navy. Every agency that has anything, the Fisheries Commission, we have had to work with them to ensure that this decommissioning is done in the safest of manners. Because we are concerned about the safety of the platform itself and the safety of the people who use the, 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 the sea where this platform is. The metals in here, the good ones can be recycled. Our plan is to make sure that no hazardous waste is left on the sea. The environmental plans are so tight that we, we are hoping and praying that no disaster will happen. We are assuring Nananum that 
all the checks have been put in place, even the cutting to make sure that nothing falls even on the seabed to disturb anybody. We need, they need to make sure, and the contractors are aware of this. These are huge. You see this as a picture, but when you get close, these are huge installments. But it doesn't come close to any of the things that are happening in the other places. This is small in the oil industry, but it's still a huge thing. And they need to make sure that none of these things falls on anybody during the cutting. So that, that's why we have the things will be cut. There, there will be wires holding these things. So immediately it is cut. It is lifted onto a waiting supply boat and transported to a safe zone to make sure that, and the scrap will be resold and reused. And uh, we are hoping to probably use part of the profit from the scrap to also to support the primary communities in terms of the corporate social responsibility towards the community.